All right, class, on your project three, your final example is an example of two-way ANOVA because you have two independent variables. I'm just going to do a short video to walk you through how to do the SPSS because as you know from the information that I had posted in the course a while back on the project sam the sample project exercise, then you need to make sure that you include the hypotheses, include your SPSS output, and then of course give your conclusions in context based on your knowledge and learning of how to interpret the SPSS output. All right, so if you look on your screen, you see that I've made up an example similar to the one that you will have to do for question five on the project. So in my example, let's just hypothetically say that we're monitoring the stress level from patients or participants that um, one, it's the two independent variables here are amount of exercise, and there are two levels there. And then the second factor is relaxation method. And as you see, A, B, and C, there are three levels there. So because we have these two independent variables, then that is why we are doing two-way ANOVA. Of course, our dependent variable is stress level. And so all of these numbers you see here are the various stress levels. From this table and from the one that you'll be given in question five, then you can tell that each combination had five patients in it. So for example, these five right here are the stress levels of the patients that were exercising less than 30 minutes a day and, take, and using relaxation method A. These five numbers are the stress levels of the patients that were exercising less than 30 minutes and using relaxation method B and so forth. So each group has five participants in it for a total of 30 total participants. All right, so here's how you do the SPSS. First of all, let me go ahead and so these are going to be the numbers you'll see me type in, but you're going to have to enter variable information for three variables because you're going to have to enter information for the exercise levels, then you're going to have to enter information on the relaxation methods, and then you're going to have to enter the stress levels, which are the dependent variable for all 30 participants. All right, so let me go ahead and open up SPSS right here on the screen. So we will first want to start with variable view down here, and I will go ahead and just name the exercise variable, and I'll call it exercise. Then I'll just click my mouse in the second cell so it will auto-populate. I don't need any decimal places because as y'all notice from the stress levels, they were all whole numbers. So I'll go down to zero. Then I'm going to click in the label box and type the word exercise again. I'm going to click in the values box and type on the dot, dot, dot pop up so that it will give me this. And because there were two exercise levels, one was the less than 30 minutes and one was the 30 or more, then I'm going to call one of them one. That will be my less than 30 minutes. So that's the label. I'm going to add that. And then the number two will be the 30 or more minutes of exercise. I'll add that and click OK. And everything else down here on the measure, since it's a nominal variable, or really it's ordinal, we can go ahead and click ordinal. That's because it's a it's a qualitative variable, but there is some order to it. Obviously, the patients that are exercising 30 or more minutes are at a higher exercise level than the ones that are exercising less than 30 minutes. All right, our second variable name is, I'm just going to call it relaxation for the various relaxation methods. Click my mouse to auto-populate. Once again, come down to decimals and put on zero. Label is relaxation. Oops. And now I'm going to have to have three values. So I'm going to click on the dot, 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 get the pop-up. Value 1 is going to get the label A for relaxation method A. I'll add that. Value 2 is going to be the code for relaxation method B. And value 3 is going to be the code for relaxation level C. I'll add that and click OK. My third variable is the quantitative dependent variable, which is stress level. I'll call it stress. Go ahead and click my mouse in here, go down to the zero decimal places. And because it's a quantitative variable without groupings, I don't need to do any of the labeling. I'm just going to come down here to the measure column and call it scale because it's quantitative. And actually up here with the relaxation methods, those are nominal. There's no particular order to them and they are qualitative. 
All right, so that's how you'll first set up your variable values for the different variables, your two independents and your one dependent. Then we want to go to data view. And here's where we're going to enter, enter our information. Now, if you remember what that chart looked like, there were going to be 5, 10, 15 patients that were exercising less than 30 minutes. And there were going to be 5, 10, 15 that were exercising 30 or more minutes. So therefore, I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing up. All right, so the exercises, remember, 15 are at the exercise level 1. Or really, that's the less than 30 minutes. And that's based on how I coded it. So I'm just going to go down here and enter my 15 number 1s. And I'm going to enter my 15 number 2s for the exercise levels. All right, then I'm going to scroll back up. Now, remember with relaxation, there were three levels. So I actually had 10 patients at relaxation method A because there were, so the, these are the 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Actually, you know what? It's going to be easier to do it this way. All right. So one, two, three, four, five of the less than 30 minute exercises were relaxation method A. Then I need to change this to five twos because there were five people who were exercising less than 30 minutes but who were getting relaxation method B. And then there were five people that were getting less than 30 minutes of exercise but getting relaxation method three. That took care of the 15 patients that were all at less than 30 minutes exercise. Similarly, with these patients that were exercising 30 minutes or more, there were five that were getting relaxation method A, there were five that were getting relaxation method B, and there were five that were getting relaxation method C. So that's sim very similar to how you'll be entering it for your actual question number five from the project. And then the stress levels. And so you have to get that from the table that's given to you. So you go find the five stress levels listed under the patients that had less than 30 minutes of exercise and had relaxation method A. And that was 6, 4, 6, 5, and 8, if you think about my previous table. Those that were still getting less than 30 minutes of exercise but relaxation method B were 7, the stress levels were 7, 9, 8, 8, 7. And then those at less than 30 minutes getting relaxation method C were 7, 4, 8, 5, 5. And then similarly, those that were getting 30 minutes or more of exercise, their stress levels who got relaxation method A were 4, 2, 2, 2, 5. And then those that got relaxation method B, 5, 6, 3, 6, 5. And those that had relaxation method C that were exercising 30 or more minutes, stress levels 1, 3, 2, 2, 3. And this is, of course, assuming that stress levels are better if they are lower. <coughs> so lower numbers are preferred. All right, that's how you're going to enter the data. Once you get all the data entered like that under data view, you're ready to run the two-way ANOVA. Now, different things that are going to be important to click, because you'll know that the part B wants you to calculate effect size so uh, SPSS actually will calculate partial, partial eta squared, which was discussed in your text. So that'll be the effect size we use. Otherwise, we are going to also want to do the, uh, run the post hocs so that we can tell if we, in fact, get significant differences where they are. All right, so run, to run the two-way ANOVA, you're going to click Analyze. You're going to go down here to General Linear Model, and you're going to click on Univariate because you only have one dependent variable, which is stress level. Your dependent variable is stress level, so highlight, click that. And your two fixed factors are the grouping factors, the qualitative factors of exercise and of relaxation. We'll put them both there. Various things that we want to get, the, get SPSS to do to help us interpret and give our conclusions. post hoc. We want post hocs really realistically. We don't need the post hocs for exercise since there were only two groups, but I'll go ahead and just click on both so we can see what the output tells us. And we're going to go ahead and do two keys for our post hoc. If you remember from your reading, that's, that was the most common one to use, especially when you have more than two levels. So we're doing two keys, and we will go ahead and then click Continue. 
All right, other helpful things. We will want to do plots so that if, in fact, there's a significant interaction, we can try to use a, a visual plot to help us tell why. And usually the independent variable that has more categories is better to put on the horizontal axis. So I'm going to actually put relaxation on the horizontal since there's more, since there were three levels of that, and put the exercise on the uh, as the lines in the plot since there were only two levels of that. It makes it look, look less confusing and messy when you'll put the independent variable that had the most number of levels on the horizontal axis. We'll add those and then we will click continue there. The other thing we want is to click on options so that we can get the uh, output to give us all the means so that we will be able to tell where those significant means are and which groups had higher or lower means. And of course, in this case, it's better if you have a lower mean for stress level. And I will click on descriptive statistics and also estimates of effect size since Part B asked us to calculate the effect sizes. Leave it at the 0.05 level and click continue and then go ahead and click OK. And we will then get our, all of our output that we need. Now I'm really going to leave it up to you to show your knowledge on how to interpret. In your web assigns, y'all were able to calculate a lot of this stuff most likely by hand, although some of y'all may have used SPSS a lot for your homework. But basically we come scroll up here and look at the output. Now it does tell us that post talks were not performed for exercise because there were fewer than three groups. That I didn't realize that it was going to do that, but yep, that's a more updated version where they don't even really give you that output. We don't need it. Okay, and I'll show you why we don't really need it. Okay, on the other hand though, since relaxation had three groups, we will need to look at post talks because as you remember, the ANOVA will only tell us that there are significant differences or not, and if there are significant differences, we, know, we won't know where they are until we do the post hoc test. Okay, so we come down here. These are the means so that we should be able to tell which exercise level had the lower average stress level if we get a significant result. Now the important ANOVA summary table is right here, although you don't need to look at the corrected model numbers and you don't need to look at the intercept numbers. The three numbers that are going to be most important for you are the three rows of information are the exercise row, the relaxation row, and the exercise relaxation interaction, which is the one that has the asterisk in between. And realistically, these are F-test statistics. You recognize things in here from your ANOVA tables, sum of squares, degrees of freedom, and mean squares. But in order to interpret the results, we really only need to come over here and look at these p-values. Okay, you may have in your homework had to use critical values and then you would need to look up the critical values based on the degrees of freedom and compare each of your F values to the critical value to see if it was a significant effect. But it's a lot quicker with technology now just to look at the p-values and when your p-values are less than 0.05 it is letting you know that that's a significant effect. So notice exercise has a p-value that's been rounded to zero and y'all sig is what SPSS uses to denote the p-value, okay? So we basically conclude here that exercise does have a significant effect on stress levels, all right? And because we did not get post talks for exercise since there were only two levels, we can come up here and look and see that the less than 30 exercise had a mean of 6.47, whereas the 30 or more minutes of exercise had a mean of only 3.4. So therefore, since we knew from the low p-value that exercise was a significant effect, then we can specifically say that the patients who exercised 30 or more minutes had a lower average stress level than patients who uh, exercised less than 30 minutes. And it is a significant difference. We can tell that from our low p-value. Okay. All right. Relaxation. Notice the p-value is also less than 0.05. It's 0.001. Therefore, we can tell that the relaxation methods do have an effect on one stress level. Now, we will have to look to the post talks to tell which relaxation method or methods had the more successful effect. In other words, which ones produced the lower stress levels. Then the interaction between exercise and relaxation, notice, has a high p-value that's much larger than 0.05, and that is letting us know that we do not have a significant interaction effect between exercise and relaxation. 
In other words, and we'll look at the plot to see this, in other words, across the three different relaxation levels, the stress levels for the, the two different exercises do not really show any significant difference from one relaxation uh, to the next. And we'll look at the plot to be able to tell a little bit more. To me, it's easier to look at the plot to tell that there's no significant interaction. Here are your three effect sizes. So you can include that as your Part B answer for the effect sizes. And as you'll see, exercise has the larger effect. Relaxation has more of a moderate effect. And of course, it's not even relevant to look at this effect because there's not a significant interaction between exercise and relaxation. And of course, all of this can be included in your conclusion for question five of your project. This, these are different numbers. Obviously, you won't get the same results. You might get that none of them are you know, significant. You might get that all of them are, it just depends, okay? All right, then we go to the post-talks. I already showed you that the means of the exercise were different with the 30 or more group showing a lower stress level on average, and we knew that that was a significant difference because of our low p-value, all right? Now we go to the relaxation methods, and it appears that relaxation methods A and C are the preferred relaxation methods because we have lower stress levels, but we really need to look and see where the significant differences are, and this is where we go down to our post hocs, and it does all of the pairwise comparisons. Remember, you had read that Tukey's does all of the pairwise comparisons. So when we compare relaxation method A with relaxation method B, we come over here to our p-value and realize that's less than 0.05. So we say that there's a significant difference there in relaxation, relaxation method A and relaxation method B. On the other hand, A and C, there's not a significant difference because that p-value is higher than 0.05. B and A, we've already compared. B with C is also a significant difference. All right? So really, it looks like B is the one that's different from the other two, because when we put A and C together, there's not a significant difference. So where our significant differences in the relaxation method lie is B is significantly different from A, and B relaxation method is also significantly different from C. The subsets are nice because they show the groupings, and notice that Relaxation method A and C are in the same group, so there's not a significant difference there. But relaxation method B is in its own group with a higher stress level. So you'll be able to explain where the significant differences are and how, in fact, they are significantly different. Here's the plot and the reason why we did not see a significant interaction. If you look across the three relaxation levels and you see that both exercise levels, because the top one is the less than 30 group, and the bottom one is the 30 or more, then you can tell that they show the same pattern across all three relaxation me methods. If we had seen this little graph doing something really different than this one, we would have gotten a significant interaction because that would have told us that the exercise levels are behaving differently across the different relaxation levels. But in this case, the patterns on both the top and the bottom lines are very similar patterns, so there's not, we see why there was this not a significant interaction between relaxation method and exercise. When you start getting a lot of crisscrossing in different directions on both the top and the bottom graphs, then you'll see that you get a significant interaction. So I hope that that's helpful not only to walk you through the SPSS and have something visual to rely on, but also give you a little insight into how you go about looking at the output and then interpreting it so that y'all can include all that good discussion in your question five when you do your two-way ANOVA.